Oh my god. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to drop that. Look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is my third take on this review. I've recorded far too long, and I'm like, you know what? I can't. I got to deduct that shit. So let me just get the shit out of the way. Um, I've uploaded an interesting video. I've never done it before. It was a, I guess, a ranting slash reaction with no camera video where I was talking a lot of shit and the things I said were true against the Trump supporters and the Trump protesters. The video link is in the description box below. Now, I put the original video, like the links for the, for the original videos of what I've watched like all over the place, so hopefully the the the, the original creator won't go ape shit on me and copyright the damn video. But besides all that, go check that out. The link is in the description box below. And yeah, I think that's all I need that need to be said. Tonight's show from Born Wants to Do Jim's point of view. Honestly, tonight's show was actually fucking surprisingly decent. Now I'm thinking, okay. 50% I only care about the, the promos and the segments, but everything else I didn't care about. The matches, I just didn't care at all. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get straight to our Survivor Series predictions, and then we're going to get to the Raw review. Um, let me just get this out of the way. Leave a like on this video, and if you want to check out my entire channel, please do. And if you like it, then hit that subscribe button. And if you really like your boy... I tweet some random shit or funny shit or whatever shit on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. The Twitter link is always in the description box below. Follow your boy there. Get some interesting tweets from me. So now we're going to get to Survivor Series predictions. All right. Survivor Series is going to come to uh, the greatest country on the planet. The greatest province on the on. On the nation and the greatest city known to man Toronto Ontario Canada and I can officially say that because since Trump is gonna be president the United States is fucked and a lot of US people are coming over to Canada now I realized something Canadian le uh, illegal uh, system and uh, the way how people the way to for people to get to Canada is actually what it's actually what Trump wants in the states. So you're gonna go to a place that has what Trump wants. That makes no sense at all. It's like Canada has it, and you're gonna go, you're willing to go to there, but when Trump gets it. Trump is gonna pull it. He's gonna do it. You don't want it. I, I don't understand it. That makes no sense at all. But besides all that. Besides that, you know, Trump, you know, America's fucked anyway. We all know it. I've been saying it for months, so. I've been saying it for years. Fuck that. So, let's just get straight to it. Uh, Survivor Series, this Sunday, live on the WWE Network in the greatest nation ever, Toronto, Canada. Um, four to six hours fucking long. Now, I'm glad I don't have Survivor Series tickets because of those hours. I could fall asleep. I could pull what I what I did two for two weeks straight on Monday Night Raw, sit in my chair and fall asleep, and then wake up and then the, the match is over. So I'm sad but glad at the same time that I do not have Survivor Series tickets. Just saying. So uh, we have Raw versus SmackDown all over the place, plus Goldberg versus Lesnar, Fantasy Warfare. That makes no sense. How is it a fantasy if we already seen it? Triple H vs. Sting was a fantasy, but not a fantasy that people actually cared about. Taker vs. Sting is a fantasy. Goldberg vs. Undertaker, that's a fantasy. Um, a lot of matches are fantasy, alright? A lot of matches. Stephanie vs. China, I don't think that happened. That's a fantasy, but that can never happen, ever. Um, Stephanie vs. Ronda Rousey. That's a fantasy, and, and, and Rousey could... Honestly, make her way to WWE. I no, actually, I honestly don't care. And after what Conor McGregor said about WWE, he has the balls now to like, you know what? You know, I mean, WWE has the balls to be like, you know what? We took a big ass L from Conor McGregor, and we like that shit. We love taking L's. Why do you think Monday Night Raw is such a f a failure? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
bring Conor McGregor to WWE. A MMA fighter. Now, I said this to myself earlier today. The only freaking MMA or non-MMA, I don't give a fuck. Any, the only UFC fighter I want to see, and you already know it, it's CM Punk, all right? I could care less about a Conor McGregor or a Nate Diaz or whatever these people are. I don't care. I want my boy with the cult of personality. Fuck the This Fire Burns. I like the song, but I'm over it. I like cult of personality because that's when the best in the world and all that shit came through. The, this Fire Burns reminds me of Straight Edge CM Punk with the, the guy that was in the mid card. So, just saying. The cult of personality, even though he won the WWE title with the This Fire Burns theme song, but he became a mega star after it. With the cult of personality theme. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, a lot of matches, Survivor Series, Raw vs. SmackDown, Survivor Series teams, all like divisions, tag team division, women division, and the main division. Um, Brian Kendrick versus Kalisto for the Cruiserweight title. If Kalisto wins, the Cruiserweight division and the title will go to the blue brand on um, SmackDown. Ziggler vs. Zayn for the IC title. If Zayn wins, he could honestly bring the Intercontinental title to Raw, which I do not want happening. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. And Lesnar versus Goldberg, and I think that's all the matches. Yeah. Anyway, so, let's just get to the main thing, all right? Uh, Raw versus SmackDown Live, Survivor Series teams. Here's how I see it. I see Raw winning the main, the men's team, and the tag team. And they lose the women's team. Raw is winning at Survivor Series. Now I'm not I'm not saying this because I'm a I'm a Raw Mark. I'm not saying this because I love Raw and I'm one of those stupid idiots that likes Raw for some fucking reason and hates SmackDown. Oh, SmackDown's the wrestling show. Wrestling is not interesting. Wrestling is not fun. We care about entertainment. SmackDown doesn't entertain us. No. I say Raw is going to win because after all of the stupid, idiotic, retarded decisions they made, what makes you think that they're going to make a right choice on making SmackDown Live win? And let me give you an example. Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble when he clearly wasn't ready. Roman Reigns winning the WWE title in the main event, the worst main event in recent memory, with Triple H at WrestleMania 32 this year. And Roman Reigns... Being the WWE champion in, in th uh, being champion three times in four to six months. Hmm. Hmm. Also, even though I do stick with Reigns winning st uh, the Rumble, the Rumble because that's what I, I was still sticking with it. I knew Reigns was gonna win, so I'm sticking with that. And Batista the year before, you know, um, the dumb decision that they made that year was not putting Bryan in the Rumble match. And they made Brian compete the first match of the night. And people still love that match against Bray Wyatt. And he lost. So, a lot of decisions they've made were stupid. Including the authority thing. That was awful. Uh, Cena being on the cover of 2K15 when it should have been Brock Lesnar in my opinion. Or, actually no. Yeah, no, it's 2K16 Brock should have done it. And I don't give a fuck that Austin 316, 2016. I don't give a fuck about that. No. No, 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 no. I see person that on the cover of the video game deserves it because of what they've done, I guess, within a year. And I don't know. So besides all that, yeah, I see Raw winning. There's no ch I, I want SmackDown to win. Don't get me wrong. I want SmackDown to win. They deserve it. They, I want SmackDown Live to be shoved down Stephanie McMahon's throat her ego's throats, and just be like, shut the fuck up. SmackDown is better than Raw. We all know it. That's what I want. But with my knowledge of all the crap we went through, and then all the time, Reigns winning that triple threat match at Fastlane, and having Fastlane as your pay-per-view in February instead of the Elimination Chamber or No Way Out, it's ridiculous. So, I'm sticking with Raw. Simple as that. Kendrick versus Kalisto for the Cruiserweight title. I'm going with Kalisto here. Kalisto 
you know, bringing the Cruiserweight title because of that 205, 206 live thing that they're going to have later on the week. Or, sorry, uh, from the 29th, I guess. I don't know. Uh, people say it's after SmackDown. So, I guess Kalisto is going to bring it. Or at least, or they might have, uh, you know, they might have some weird finish to where they compromise. And they're like, you know what? We're going to take half of your Cruiserweights and put on SmackDown. And you guys can keep the other half. And the championship, I don't know. You know, but maybe the championship might, you know, be floating. I don't know. So I'm going to go with Kalisto here because the Cruiserweight deserves to be on the blue brand. I don't, I, I, I honestly skip the Cruiserweight matches on Raw. And I have, I have every right to. What have they done to make me care? Besides Brian Kendrick actually winning the title, after that, what have they done? They have done nothing. I like seeing my boy Cedric. I love seeing my boy Rich Swan and TJ and Brian, the man with the plan. But besides that, I don't care about everyone else. I don't care about a, Ma a Grand Metallic or uh, like when Tony Nese makes his entrance. Like when he's in the ring, he's phenomenal. But besides that, I don't care at all. And everyone else, I just don't care. Like, Davari, his brother? Do I care about him? No. I don't give a fuck about him. You know, so... I, So, yeah, I, I feel like the Crystal Witch will be better on Smack It Down Live. So, we got Dolph Ziggler versus Sami Zayn for the IC title. We are 11 minutes into the damn video. Dolph Ziggler versus, Z versus Zayn for the IC title. If Zayn wins, Barak gets the title. I want Ziggler to win. And fuck all of you Miz fans. I like Miz after that promo he did on SmackDown. On um, Talking Smack, actually. I like Miz, you know, because what him and Daniel Bryan did. All right, Yeah, sure, he wrecked Daniel Bryan. He made Daniel Bryan walk away. But him and Bryan, the interaction they had that night, made Talking Smack what it was. Or make Talking Smack the best show that episode. And everything else was like second to none after that. So, but fuck all that. I want my boy Ziggler to still be Intercontinental Champion. Miz being champion was way, was way too long. Way too overdue. I don't give a damn what anyone says. And I'm glad that the title is over. And I hope he does not get the title tomorrow night on Smack It Down. But, uh, yeah, Zane ain't winning. But if he wins, I hope he gets traded to Smack Down. You know, like Shane and and. And Daniel Bryan, you know, sneak saying like like I don't want to say sneaking across the border. That's that's uh, that's bad. <laughs> that's that's bad for me to say. I'm gonna say something like you know, just sneaking over to the other team. You know, it's like if a it's like if a blood. I'm I'm using a gang reference. It's like if a blood, you know, was secretly was with the Crips and he just he always be sneaking over to the Crip and and like the the other blood members don't know until you know that one big day where he comes out and he's like look motherfucker I'm on the other side now and I got gold with me so what's he gonna do now you know and they could probably trade I don't know trade uh David Otanga there we go um, yeah, so that's it, uh, uh, so I would give my predictions, Goldberg versus Lesnar, uh, who the f, like, I'm not saying who cares after what happened tonight, but, who do you think is gonna win, after what I've been preaching for weeks, I'm not even gonna go there, we all know Brock Lesnar is gonna win, so besides that, let's just get to Monday Night Raw, I'm not gonna read everything that's here, I'm just going to say some shit and just move on. Raw opens with awful Stephanie McMahon. I don't need to get this out of my chest right now. As a fan that have been watching since 2009, okay? First man I saw was The Undertaker and Shelton Benjamin. The Undertaker choke slamming Shelton Benjamin building up to the Royal Rumble. After that, I was hooked. After I, And then after that, actually, the first person I saw on Monday Night Raw, it was the end of the show. After I was watching Sweet Life for Zack and Cody, my friend uh, freaking changed the channel to Monday Night Raw. And Shane McMahon was the first guy I saw while I was doing my homework. He was the first guy I saw at the end of the show saying, where's Randy Orton after he was beating up Randy Orton and Legacy. Because uh, Randy Orton punted Vince McMahon in the skull week prior. After that, I was hooked. 
And all of those years, now up to now, I still, or never have, cared about Stephanie McMahon. What does she offer that I have to consider caring about? Nothing at all. Stephanie McMahon is a pain in the ass. Stephanie McMahon is that pimple on your butt cheek. And when you sit down, it hurts. And you know you gotta sit down, right? It's like you gotta watch Raw. Just to see what happens. Just to see if they will be they will be successful tonight. She's exactly that. She's, I would say, 75% reason that Raw is awful. And it's not because she's a woman... It's not because, oh, a woman in power. Oh, women in power. Oh, I'm a, I'm a feminist. You don't, you don't like women in power. How dare you? You're still stuck. You still have that, that mindset of men being in power and the women do nothing but be in the kitchen and cook your food. Are you? F no. <laughs> no. First of all, I'll be grateful if a woman cooked me food. I'll be grateful. And I am grateful. Right? Simple as that. But what I'm trying to say is it has nothing to do with that. It's just as a fan, she, to me, the list of, of McMahon, including Triple H, she is at the bottom of the freaking list, okay? Even her grandfather I care about more than Stephanie McMahon. And he hasn't done shit for me. But you know what, but you know what I'll say about this? I respect her grandfather for making, for starting, for like, you know, uh... Being the creator of the WWF, and then, and then his son Vince McMahon made it to what it is today, the WWE, and I I thank those guys for it. You see, Vince McMahon's at the top, you know, grandfather above Stephanie. Shane is like Stephanie is like superstars. Who the fuck cares, right? The grandfather's like main event. Shane and Triple H are like... No, Triple H is NXT. Right? Awesome. Shane is SmackDown. Awesome. And Vince... You know, Raw is shit. But Vince is at the top. That's what I'm trying to get. Right? Vince has entertained me as a fan. Triple H has entertained me. And I love him for it as a fan. Shane McMahon, after the crazy shit he's done, as a fan, I love it. Stephanie McMahon, all I've seen from Stephanie was slaps, degrading superstars to a point they can't come back from. Did you hear what she said to Sami Zayn the, uh, last week? And then what she did to Big Show two, two three years ago? And, and, and what she did to Daniel Bryan? And, and slapping Batista's glasses off in 2014? And, you know... <sighs> And, and, and CM Punk and calling him a failure or calling him a quitter and shit. Like, 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 seriously. This bitch got to go. I don't care that she's married to one of my favorite superstars of all time, Triple H. I don't care at all, bro. She got to go. Go home. Do something else. Do your job as the chief branding. I don't need to see you on my screen every week. I don't have a problem seeing Foley because I never, I barely see Foley until he was named GM. You know, every time when it's a Hell in the Cell season, that's when Foley comes through and he's like, you know, oh, hip surgery, hip surgery, Hell in the Cell, you'll never be the same after that match. And all that yelling and all that jizz and all that crap. So that's what I'm trying to get. Okay, Stephanie, pain in my ass for all these seven years plus. She got to go. Stephanie is the most annoying, pain in the ass McMahon I have ever seen. And people hated Triple H for burying people. This bitch buries everyone and she can't get nothing done about it. Nothing done to her. At least with Triple H, he buries people. He puts other people over. Yeah, I get it. He buried Booker T at WrestleMania. Buried Scott Stein. Any WCW guy he buried, okay? But then there's other people that we hoped that he wouldn't bury, and he actually made them succeed. Daniel Bryan is at the top of the list. I'm not putting John Cena. John Cena, he was already going to a superstar number with, with or without Triple H uh, facing him at WrestleMania 22. So, yeah. Thank you. Get what, you get what I'm saying? Stephanie is just 
a pain in the ass. She's she's talking about you know what, I'm just gonna get to the end. Fuck everything on the show. Uh, I'll get to Goldberg and and fucking Lesnar later on. Um, she she tells Shane about oh, oh. You know, you're in your pandering. The fans love you because of your pandering. What the fuck were you trying to do earlier tonight? You were pandering to the fans. Doing the yes chant. Alright, trying to, uh... Trying to... You're welcoming, you're welcoming us to Monday Nara! Are you fucking kidding me right now? And you're, and you're saying Shane McMahon is pandering and all the, all the stuff he does. Jumping off high shit. At least he's taking risks. What are you doing? You're not doing nothing. This is why I don't care about Stephanie. This is why she needs to go. To me as a fan, I mean, I've seen Shane done crazy shit. But that's why I love him. He does crazy shit. Why do you think people love Jeff Hardy for all these fucking years? He's done crazy shit. Even though with TNA, he's kind of been lacking. And the reason why Jeff Hardy is still being mentioned is because Matt Hardy actually, actually made himself great. Like, better than Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's still the guy that people want in the WWE. But regardless, Matt Hardy is the guy everyone loves right now. And I love this storyline. Matt Hardy lost his memory. He's no longer broken Matt Hardy for the time being. And Jeff Hardy's trying to bring him back at any means necessary. Heading into their their tag team deletion or whatever it's called. Um, you know, the ultimate deletion. I don't know. So, like I said, fuck everything on this show. This show, I don't give a fuck. Like I said, the matches, I could care less. So, at the beginning, she just announced matches. You know, oh, Rollins, Jericho, and Strowman will face uh, New Day. And Strowman got the win. Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens, they teamed up against Cesaro and Sheamus. They won their match, even though Kevin Owens looked weak as hell. Because Kevin Owens got broke kicked. And Reigns had to spear Sheamus down. And then Owens was pinning uh, Sheamus unconsciously. So... What can I say about that? Kendrick beats in Cara. Goldberg and uh, Lesnar. I'll get to that in a sec. Nia Jax, Alicia Fox versus Sasha Banks and Charlotte. Sasha Banks made Alicia Fox tap out to the uh, thingy. The uh, bank statement, yeah. And the worst match of the night ends on Cass and Luke Gallows and Anderson against Golden Truth. And the shining stars of the Puerto Rico. I can't roll my arms. <sighs> Who won this match? Who fucking cares? I tweeted this out and I know everybody agrees with me. They should. You cannot tell me that this is a positive. The golden truth got to go. The golden truth needs to go. I want our truth to be the crazed, uh, maniacal, lunatic, 2011, little Jimmy, okie doke, you know, get got, smoking a cigarette after beating up John Morrison. Our truth. That's what I want. And gold dust. You know? Got electrocuted by Randy Horton and Batista, and he had to go through the ah, 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 shit. You know, go like I this this team. I uh, Goldust was at his best with his brother Cody, and it WWE fucked him over with Stardust, and now uh, Cody Rhodes is fighting Kurt Angle, which actually that's not really a bad. That's actually a positive. I should go watch that. It's Walt Culture's uh, thingy. And then the winners were Enzo and Cass and Gallus and Anderson. Gallus and Anderson stole the win because Enzo was about to jump off the top rope. And yeah, that was it. So Goldberg and Lesnar. Look, Goldberg and Lesnar. Look, I wanted, look I'm going to be honest. I'm sick and tired of Paul Heyman talking for Lesnar. I don't care. Oh, Lesnar, when he talks, he, you, you can't take him seriously. Are you just, I don't give a damn how you sound. I don't care how you sound, bro. If you have a body and you're strong and you're ruthless as Brock Lesnar, who was in the UFC and has a crooked tooth, I don't care that how how weird or awkward he sounds. He if you make fun of him face to face, obviously he will rip your throat out. Don't doubt he will do it without breaking a sweat. 
So I want Brock Lesnar to talk. Uh, the only thing I heard Brock Lesnar said was "shut the hell up" to the fans, you know. But besides that, I want I wanted Lesnar to talk. I don't I don't want Lesnar to do that, you know. Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, and he's crying. Ugh, shit, no, not 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 that Brock Lesnar. The Brock Lesnar that we all know and love, but you know, minus the Suplex City garbage. But uh, yeah, and then Goldberg, you know, he fucking tear the security guards into a new one and then like when when Goldberg was clear in the ring I'm like Lesnar please I don't care that Survivor Series is this Sunday get in that ring he almost got in the ring but then he pussed out and I'm like ah oh, great we're gonna have to wait till uh Survivor Series but a lot of people some people were like oh Goldberg you know he was winded he was uh I mean the man hasn't done any action shit in years and I'm not counting that thing he did with Heyman and uh, Rusev. I mean, a jackhammer. And, and I'm pretty sure he didn't forget how to do a jackhammer. So that wasn't a problem. And the spear, I mean, Heyman, I mean, he he sold that awkwardly. You know, he, he it was like he was falling before Goldberg even hit him. But you know how it is. I mean, Goldberg was a little bit excited, too excited to me. Like, when he tried to close on the, the, the security guard, he almost closed on himself, cactus jack style, onto the outside. But uh, besides all that, you know, Goldberg, you know, he looked good. You know, he was sweating, like, he was sweating buckets. But, you know, I was hoping that Goldberg would do his entrance properly, like, while he was wearing a shirt. But he did, like, he did the kick first and then a punch and then an uppercut. I'm like, no. It's, you're supposed to lift both hands up, you know, you know, growl and shit. And then you uppercut, right punch, and kick, you know. One day, I'm, I'm, I'm going to freaking do, like, a video of me doing the entrance. It's going to look awful, but he's he, he should do it how it's supposed to be done. All right? Um, so, yeah. I love the segment. The segment got me hyped as shit. That's the segment that got me to make Raw close to decent. Now, let's get to the important part. This reminded me of 2005. Like, watching uh, 2005 clips... Of uh, brand warfare, Stephanie and Mick Foley in the ring, and before Mick, Stephanie McMahon could t- could continue talking, thank Christ, Shane McMahon came out and uh, interrupted her because she's nauseating to listen to. All right, and then they were traded some words, and then you know Stephanie brings out Team Raw. I'm like Team Raw, they look they're strong, but they look weak. I mean Rollins. I can't take you seriously. You had a dick pic relie- released on the internet by your ex-wife or or fiance or ex-fiance. Roman Reigns, I mean, you're a mid-carder. I don't give a fuck that you call yourself the big dog. I can't take you serious. Jericho, you have the list. Without the list, we don't want to give a fuck about you. And Owens, you're a weak champion. And Braun, you can barely move in the ring. So, how am I going to care about Raw? Team Raw, but then when AJ's the way how the way how SmackDown came to, they came in like if <laughs> I swear to God, they came in like like if they were intruding the show when they're not supposed to, and it, it was awesome. AJ Styles came in, and I'm like, here comes the phenomenal AJ's. Well, David Bryan said, "Oh, you didn't think we came alone, did you?" That's kind of stupid. So then, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt. I, I was like, I was like, where's Luke Harper? He's not here. I guess Luke Harper's not on the team. Uh, I, I guess. And then, uh, Ellsworth and Ambrose, and I'm like, holy shit, you know. And then after AJ Styles and Owens had some words. I'm like, I thought Owens was gonna bring up about what AJ Styles said on SmackDown, saying that Owens has the women's title, and. Uh, you know, just making fun of Owens, and then he said that, oh, the like HL's got a pop for saying that Owens is still stuck on Jericho's tit. Now, did he said teat? It says teat here, but I think he said tit. Did he say tit? I think he said tit. And after Jericho, you know, saying, calling AJ a stupid idiot and talking about his haircut, and AJ Styles brought up about that Y2 AJ crap earlier this year, and... You know, I knew I knew it was a sham from the beginning, and I'm like Jericho's gonna turn on him very quickly. Do you think I'm gonna think I'm gonna stand here and believe that you know Y2H is gonna stay alive? Hell no. 
we're leading into WrestleMania. You don't think I don't, you don't think that Jericho's gonna be pissed that he lost to AJ, who been in the WWE for less than a month and lost to him twice. So uh, yeah, and then you know Ellsworth was in the back corner and Jericho was like, "Who the hell or what the hell is that?" And he points out to Ellsworth. Fans were chanting for Ellsworth. Don't raw and they chanted for a SmackDown superstar. Ain't that some shit? And um, Jericho was like, "You're a weird looking guy." And you know what happens to Wheeler and Guy? Clicks the, the the pen. You just made the list! And then AJ Styles for having a, a soccer mom haircut? You know what happens? Clicks the pen. You just made the list! You, AJ Styles, making fun of my friendship with Kevin Owens? You know what happens? Will you make fun of my friendship with Kevin Owens? Clicks the pen. You just made the list! <laughs> I swear to God. Now... Everybody had some words. Bray Wyatt, I wanted to see Bray Wyatt and Strowman go at it. Bray, Bray Wyatt was like, bruh, I gave you the keys to the kingdom. And this is what you do to me, man? You're doing with these guys? I gave you the power. And now, you're doing me like this. You know, since you're on the team, I will have nothing more than pleasure. I want to have nothing more. I will have nothing much. More than to beat you and destroy what I created. And he said we, as in Team SmackDown, is going to beat Braun Strowman and destroy what Bro, Bro, Bray Wyatt created. That, that gave me chills. I was like, yo, I would love to see this. I mean, it would kind of be an awful match, but I would love to see Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt. You know, the new Braun Strowman with the weird-looking haircut with the ponytail. And he beats up and he fights um, his leader, his former leader in Bray Wyatt. Yo, I would love that. And uh, Randy Orton steps up into Braun's face, you know. And then Rollins brings up, you know, that, you know, from the Universal Champion to the big... What he said, big dog to Reigns? I'm like, I get it, you're a baby face, but did you really have to... I mean, after all the years you went through... You're gonna be like, oh, the big, you're just gonna suck on his dick. You're gonna fucking jerk him off real quick. Oh, the big dog, Roman Reigns, and, 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 and the man. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is not, you know, I always wanted a babyface Rollins, but not like this. Pandering? Really? Stroking Roman Reigns off like that? Really, Rollins? It made me lose a little bit of respect for you, bro. I'm like, you know, wonder, no wonder you're not Universal Champion. But then Kevin Owens is a weak ass champion too, so I don't know. And then the most important guy got the microphone. Dean Ambrose, in my eyes. Do you want to know why? Because Rollins and Reigns were in the ring, and I'm thinking Shield, and I'm thinking, okay, what is Ambrose gonna say to his former Shield brothers on the other on the other side? And Ambrose, he was pacing back and forth. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go, here we go. And then when he sat there, I'm like, oh, he's gonna... And he strikes Jericho, and then he had the brawl, and then, you know, uh, uh, a lot of shit happened. Uh, Jericho drop kicks AJ to the outside. Randy Orton got Jericho with an RKO. Bray Wyatt tried to hit uh, sister, uh, sister Abigail on uh, Roman Reigns, but Roman Reigns came back with the Superman holes. You know, Reigns stands tall and the fans boo his ass, obviously. Reigns about to dive to the road, dive outside, but uh, AJ Styles and decks him to the face. Rollins stops the uh, the attempt from uh, AJ Styles going for the Styles Clash into a pedigree. And Team Raw, which is standing... Oh, and uh, by the way, the Shield powerbomb, by the way. Uh, yeah, Rollins and Reigns were setting it up. And he had AJ up, and I'm like, okay, show power bomb. But no, they fucking lost his ass on the team SmackDown, and I'm like, damn, wow, Team Raw looking tall. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's a sign saying, look, Team Raw standing tall, but SmackDown wins at Survivor Series. I hope that's a sign. I hope, Lord, give me a sign, you know, DMX, you know. But besides that, yeah, that's it for Raw, man. So, like I said, the promos did me so well. Stephen McMahon. So, what we what have we learned today, folks? We learned that your boy, 
Jim here. Like segments, really good ones. Goldberg and Lesnar might be a good fight. Team Raw vs. Team SmackDown, that build alone sold me for Survivor Series. That This segment alone built me up. Sold me for Survivor Series. Everything weeks prior, Monday Night Raw side, I don't care. Smackdown a little bit. So, yeah. There you guys have it. And uh, the matches, I don't care. I mean, you know, they're, they're far too long. You know, they, they tried to make me care about the matches, but in the end, I just don't care about the matches anymore. Unless it has meaning like, oh, if this guy wins, he's done more contender or some shit, you know? Unless it's predictable like Reigns going to fight at Owens for the Universal title at Roblox. I see that coming. We already know it. And I, don't, and I do see Reigns winning that Universal title in the future between now until next year. So, uh, I see that happening. So, there you guys have it. So, we learned that I love promos. I love segments. And I love brawls in the end. You know, if they make it good and actually care. And Stephanie McMahon needs to fucking go. She's annoying. She's the, she's the least McMahon I care about. I care about her mother more than I care about her. And her mother is, is thanking Donald Trump. And then uh, all that good shit. And by the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at these top photos. Uh, hot new Emma bikini photo. Like, Emma, you're hot. Zack Ryder's lucky to have you. But I don't care. Evil Emma was the best you ever were. JoJo, my girl. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, what do you guys think about Monday Night Raw tonight? Leave your comments below and I'm out of here. Thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. I am out. Uh, later. We some southern boys with the promise strength. Ain't nobody man in